Um, you probably asked Fluky about that. He's, he's been led by him for a season. I think with Liam, he's really under, understated. Um, he's a leader in a Super Rugby team anyway, and so he's got that leadership experience. He was identified by the players as a, as a natural leader in the group. Um, he's a line-out caller, uh, so he already has a, a responsibility in, in the team. Not that he calls all the line-outs, but, but it's one of the things that uh, he contributes to. So well, I think what all the coaches liked about Liam is um, you know, he, he doesn't really say that much. He just, he just gets on and, and, and gets the job done really well. So that, that's probably it in a nutshell. Do you say about the players? Not about captaincy per se, just around leadership. And, um, and probably not even asking that direct question, but just getting a sense of who they felt um, kind of demonstrated the, the, uh, the values and behaviours that they felt um, they they would value the most and and uh, and would naturally lead the the players that would naturally lead and that they would they would try to probably mirror the behaviours that they saw from those people. Um, at, at at the moment, everything's pretty short term, including our preparation. <laughs> Um, we've had four trainings really, uh, so I've really enjoyed working with Liam but um, same with all the others from the leadership group and, and with the players in general. Uh, I think they've been a super group to, to work with um, but it's a really interdependent game, rugby, it's one of the things I love about it but it, it does mean that your preparation has to be nailed on pretty well if you're going to get the cohesion on, on a Saturday. and. So, well, I can't guarantee the cohesion. I, I think, you know, guys like Josh and, and, and the rest of the squad, I, I can pretty much guarantee the effort that will be there. What you said on, on Liam, in the side and also captain? Um, well, it was probably just once we'd selected the side um, for, for this weekend, it was a, it was a discussion around who's likely to stay on for a long period of time, who, who already has a responsibility in the team. Um, and n not all the players that were selected wanted the responsibility either. You know, some players just want to get on and get their own job done. Um, and, and while Liam didn't put himself forward, uh, he, he, he's accepted the challenge. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one to answer, to be honest, because you know, I would have had two captains in seven years uh, with Ireland, but inevitably there were other guys who, you know, guys wouldn't be available, and so guys like Pete Omani and Johnny Sexton, those guys, in between the Paul O'Connells and Rory Best that were long-term skippers. So you're, you're always going to have a little bit of undulation in that leadership because of availability. Um, or, or selection on a particular on a particular test match. So uh, we're just kind of at the moment trying to take it step by step. And that was the first step was to get the selection, um, and, and then to get someone within the selection who already had a leadership role, wasn't going to be felt feel uncomfortable or distracted by the role. Um, and, and it you know it, it was a confidence we had in, in Liam as well. Yeah, we were trying to get balance in a whole lot of ways, um, and you know, some of it is around guys who already have a, a relationship in, in their um, super. So, you know, we've got Tate and Tom coming off the bench. They've got a really good relationship. You got Hunter and, and uh, Josh in the in the middle of of the field. Um, so, you know, there's a there's a few combinations like that. Um, Andy Callaway and, and uh, 
and Tom Wright have played a bit together in a gold jersey. And um, you know, I, I think Filippo for us, he, he's uh, he's really versatile. So he's he's a really good cover all for us, starting on the wing, but being able to cover other positions um, up up front. Again, you know, we've we've got a real mix. We've got some some experience with some huge experience with slips up front and um, and at the same time Taniella's been there often enough but but Matt so, not so much at the same time Matt has been in the Wallabies recently and, and is quite comfortable there Luke Khan and, and, and Jeremy Williams one making their debut one with some experience and then the back row with with some pretty good experience off the bench what, what we're hoping to get out of the bench is that Individuals who come on, they come into um, some experience around them. Just experience is never going to uh, be a solution in itself, but it can contribute to uh, a little bit of confidence and certainty around you just doing your role and, and then uh, making sure that the, the player slots in as seamlessly as possible, I think. No, no. Um, I, I guess you know, it's probably uh, difficult sometimes externally to, to comprehend, but for me, uh, they're, they're just seven players. The fact that they haven't um, worn a, a Wallaby jersey before this is, uh, yeah, it's relevant, but it's not, it, it's not going to be pivotal or tip the equilibrium in, in selection. We just felt that we... We had a balance, you know, a, a young guy like Charlie Kale, and he, he had a little bit of a, an injury coming out of the end of Super Rugby, so it was, it was good for us to build him in and slot him in behind someone like, a, a, you know, a Rob Valentini and, and, and Liam and, um, and Fraser, where there's good experience, and he'll slot in there somewhere in the second half and, and bring that athleticism that he's got to it. Um, as I said with Tate and Tom, um, up front, Yo, know, I think the leadership at the back end of the game, having someone like Alan Alalatoa, particularly when you've got someone like Isaac Kailia. Isaac, you know, he is a debutant, so ha having him there, and, and Billy's only had one game, so Alan's a perfect guy. He's played with Billy, and, you know, he he'll be able to keep Isaac on track and, and give him some confidence that he's in a, he's in a wallaby front row when he, when he does come on. So th those sort of combinations... Angus, Angus Blythe has really impressed us. He's a big, he's a big fella, Angus. And, um, you know, I, I think building him forward, he's been so enthusiastic in everything he's, he's, he's done. And there's a real contest in that second row area. I, I think you will see probably a couple of different combinations over the next couple of weeks so that we, we kind of find out where, where they all sit amongst each other. Um, I think some of that super connection and some of that balance, as I was explaining, with the guys coming off the bench, um, bringing those young guys on with them and then slotting in amongst experienced guys, hopefully some of the guys that they already know anyway. Um, and then it was, it, it was probably just some of, some of them are a bit fresher than others. Some had big super rugby uh, campaigns. You know, uh, Ryan Smith was super in camp, but geez, he, he, he played so many minutes and he has so many match involvements when he plays. You know, everyone's minutes don't look the same. Uh, he, he just gets involved in so much play. So that, that was part of the, the balance in trying to have a really uh, keen, fresh group, but a balance of experience and, and uh, I, I suppose a balance of what we saw potential in, that hopefully that potential becomes the performance that we need. You're going to use this July series the way, the way it sounds like you're talking there as, as a block to ascertain perhaps your best team from the start of the championship or something? I, 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 I wouldn't say that. Inevitably there's, there's going to be things we find out about players, but every 
Every moment in a test match is important. Every time somebody gets a chance to put on a test match jersey, it's important. And um, we've got to be short-term focused and, and, and make sure we win as many of the moments that matter on Saturday so that we build some confidence in combinations but also keep the scoreboard ticking over. And that, that, that are slightly different challenges. You know, the scoreboard always helps confidence if it's, if it's going in your, in your direction. At the same time, having time on the pitch together builds, builds confidence because um, you, you'll know that you, you build trust through having a relationship where somebody delivers and then you can rely on them delivering. And, and, and so it'll be very much that. Yeah, well, hard to talk about Fluky here. I suppose he's, um, yeah, I, I, I certainly want to keep him grounded before he gets uh, gets the Saturday. But he, he's just he's just a quiet achiever. You know, you don't see or hear a huge amount from from Josh, but you just see him do the right thing at the right time, a lot of the time. And um, you know, if he can do that for us on Saturday, that would be massive. Uh, I talked about his combination with Hunter, and, and um, you know, even with Filippo, um, you know, the, he, he knows. Um, so that will help, even with Tom and Tate when they come on. So that 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 sort of fitted for us, um, and we've been really impressed with the way that he's 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 slotted in very quickly. Um, good uh, skill set. Uh, with his with his passing kicking skills as well, so it's a good little package for us that hopefully you know he he's looking forward to delivering. And then um, Angus, again, he's just been so enthusiastic, and he's uh, I think he's two oh five, two meters oh five, but he he can play really low to the ground, and and a lot of big men. Um, struggle to play low to the ground, and, and just with the game the way it is, defensively, particularly in the tackle, just having a guy of his size who can get down and, and, and chop nice and low and um, you know, be nice and big in the moments we need him to be at line-out time and then, and then be able to, to, to get that clean-out nice and low and get that, get that tackle nice and low. Uh, yeah, definitely a lot of smiling involved, that was, that was for sure. Uh, it was just uh, Joe named the team list on uh, Tuesday during our meeting pre, pre-training session. So um, no, I was pretty stoked, uh, had a couple of boys around me, so a couple of pats on the head. And then uh, I was very quickly on the phone to Dad to let him the good news. And um, no, I was just really excited, couldn't wipe a smile off my face. Yeah, obviously it was always the goal. It probably came a bit earlier than I was expecting, but no. Nah, um, uh, both both the shoulder injuries were big, had a big impact on me. But I, how I came back from that, you know, I had a very good group of people around me with my family and all the staff there at the Reds. So, no, nah, it, it was good. Came back strong, and I'm uh, really happy to be here. Yeah, definitely, it has a impact on that pressure but you know every, every player goes through an injury everyone's dealt with some type of injury in their career or they will at some point so everyone's got that type of resilience in them you can't you can't not have that resilience if you want to be a rugby player yeah he'll just be everywhere you know he'll Lead from, from the front foot, you know, he'll run around the field, he'll uh, put his head into the dark places where I don't want to put my head, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but, you know, yeah, he's, he's not a big speaker at all, but, you know, when he talks, you listen. You know, he has some very good words to say, so you switch on when he wants to say, tell you something. Joe, is part of the motivation when you're picking up Lola playing right on Jeremy Williams, the, their sense of opportunity, the way that they're going to react to what you're doing? Um, 
it, not intentionally, but but you hope that that's that's something you get a reaction that that they feel, wow, this is my opportunity. Oh, I want to grab it with both hands, and then I want to balance that with a with a calmness, a clarity of what I I need to do for the team. Um, because we, we can't afford to be overly emotional, and it'll be an emotional moment. It, it'll be emotional when um, when the national anthems are sung, and it'll be emotional up until the kickoff. But I, I think, particularly professional players nowadays, they're very good at starting to to kind of, I suppose, just close the focus around what's immediately important, and that will be the ball in the air and Jeremy going up to, to catch it or or that first clean out that Liam's required to do, whatever that action is, I, I think they'll be able to isolate the actions that are required rather than the emotion that's, that will spill over a little bit potentially um, you know, in, in, in that lead up immediately before the test match kicks off. Yeah, I've known Gats for a long time. We played against each other. I even played played a couple of games with them. So I, I, I know that um, that, that Gats will he he will spark the emotional cues, and he will have a very passionate Welsh team charging out there on, on Saturday night. And um, some of those guys, similarly, I suppose to, to our guys, have been given an opportunity. You know. Uh, um, a, a young guy like Ben Thomas, that's a, that's a massive opportunity for him. Um, Mason Grady being retained in that midfield, he's a young, he's a big young kid. Um, and, you know, young Hathaway on the wing, um, exciting young, um, dual qualified. So there's always an encouragement there to make sure he, he's put that, um, put that Welsh jersey on before before an England one comes, comes anywhere near him. So th those sorts of things. And, you know, I, I know Liam Williams pretty well. I remember him playing his very first uh, professional game, um, Scarlets against Leinster, and um, he, he was marking a guy, Issa Nathewa at the time, and I think it was a bit of a baptism of fire for him. And uh, he's come through the fire, and he has had an outstanding career. Um, you know, probably the, you know, the, the the highlight I remember of Liam Williams was the Lions 20, uh, 2017 where he sparked a try from the, you know, from virtually from his own goal line um, that uh, in that first test against the All Blacks. So he, he's had some fantastic moments. He's a competitor, massive competitor. So, yeah, I think they've been looking for the balance of experience and, and um an opportunity. Similarly, uh, we've gone down a, a similar pathway. Joe, the Wallabies struggled to close out really tight games for a long time. The Waratahs did as well this year. Is there certain areas of the game that you've had to highlight or mental aspects of the game to try to address the last 10 minutes and closing out matches? Um, you know, we probably haven't got that far down the track. We just trying to stack a whole lot of good moments together and and you know I think if we're focused on the action we're delivering um, ho hopefully we're not too much distracted by any anxiety of that last 10 minutes and it's still tight on the scoreboard we're, we're more focused on right oh well we've got a left hand scrum this is my role and and more about what we're doing rather than you know those extraneous factors that can be distracting Yeah, no, it's been pretty cool. You know, um, we've got Billy Pollard and Zane Nongor in here, and we were both in that team, and Tommy Hooper as well, uh, back in the day that played uh, over in New Zealand. So, no, it's been really cool to watch those blokes get those opportunities, and they've thoroughly deserved it. But um, now to be here with them, you know, it's, uh, it's really exciting, and I just can't wait to get out there Saturday and step foot onto the field. Yeah, Tommy again, 
he's a cool customer, Tom. Uh, you talk to him, he just doesn't get ruffled. Oh, I've tried to ruffle him, to be fair, and uh, put him under a little bit of pressure, but he, he just doesn't get ruffled. I, I, I love that, you know, and I think the players around him love it because what you want is that calm in, in, that, uh, in that real hub pivot position. You want someone who, who's not going to be ruffled, who's going to stay nice and clean and clear in, in their thinking and, and then in their delivery or their... their um, whatever they're required to do, either side of the ball. And you know, I know I've spoken about his courage before and uh, I, I don't have any doubts about him stepping up there. They, they, they will bring a big direct midfield carry at us. They'll get Aaron Wainwright running off things and running down channels. And um, you know, Tom is the sort of guy who'll go, you know, well, he won't say anything. He, he just get on and do it. And if that's his tackle, then he'll make that tackle. So, yeah, I, I, again, I, I've been impressed with a number of players who, um, who who are able just to stay focused on what needs to be done rather than getting ruffled or distracted by things that they can't really control anyway. They can only influence what's immediately in front of them. Yeah, Jake again, um, you know, he's probably just had the sharpest of the pass um, of the three guys so far. And um, he's, got, he's got that really nice long kicking game, high kicking game. And those are elements that uh, I, I think we can make use of, particularly we looked earlier at the, you can't tell Sydney weather early in the week so we had a look and it looked like it was going to be rain but now it's saying sunny so it's probably going to be rain so we're 48 hours out and things fluctuate a lot what we don't want to fluctuate is is whatever does turn up we turn up with the right sort of armory and and we just felt jake had, had the right sort of armory for us to to kick the the first test off with thanks guys appreciate it.